Welcome back to Media 7. The conspiracy theory is hardly a new phenomenon, and coming up, Sarah Daniel looks at a conspiracy culture that's been with us for a long time. But we'll kick off with the news, which, especially in America, is being driven not by the shot that rang out, but the shot in your arm. I can't believe that we live in the world that we do now, where there's such a lack of trust. If Fox News' Glenn Beck is scared, should you be too? Well, Fox has a doctor who says you should be. Dr. Kent Holtorf, who is an expert on infectious diseases. I have more concern about the vaccine than I do about the swine flu. Would my you give it to your kids? I definitely would not. OK, Holtorf's not actually an infectious diseases expert. He's an anti-aging quack with a magic potion business. But that's not important right now, because even pot-smoking liberal atheist TV host Bill Maher says the government lies. Why would you let them be the ones to stick a disease into your arm? I would never get a swine flu vaccine or any. Yeah, yeah, and I don't trust the government, especially with my health. Yeah. Oh, but it's worse than that. Yes, according to Auckland-based Uncensored magazine, swine flu may well have been made in the lab and released to drum up business for drug companies with the secret connivance of world governments. That's what makes it a conspiracy theory. Like many such theories, it has the odd grain of truth. In 1976, the US government did urge citizens to get a swine flu shot. Swine flu shot? Well, I don't know. I've been thinking about it. But... Remember the swine flu scare of 1976? Washington decided that every man, woman and child in the nation should get a shot. And now 4,000 Americans are claiming damages from Uncle Sam amounting to three and a half billion dollars because of what happened when they took that shot. In the final count of nearly 50 million Americans vaccinated, a thousand contracted a rare neurological disease and 25 of them died. The virus itself never caught on. Such theories share a buffet table with a feast of others detailed in this year's skeptical documentary, New World Order. You want us to back off? You got the nerve to call us conspiracy theorists just because we're informed. But the New World Order isn't new. It was warned of by Cleon Skusen, the paranoid conservative now hailed as divinely inspired by Glenn Beck. Beck wrote the foreword for this year's new edition of Skusen's 1981 book, The 5,000 Year Leap, which subsequently hit number one on Amazon. You know what? He's right. You may think these people are crazy, but for them, 2009 is turning out to be a vintage media year. With me now to survey this remarkable environment are Auckland University conspiracy theory specialist Matthew Dentith. Hello. 95 BFM breakfast host, former uncensored columnist and sort of conspiracy theorist Mikey Havoc. Hello. And SciTech Daily editor and New Zealand Skeptics chair entity Vicky Hyde. Hi. Welcome to you all. Now, Matthew, the current unease with the swine flu vaccine, um, what do you make of it? Is it rooted in some sort of reality or is it the product of the unusual political climate in America at the moment? Well, I mean, to a large extent of it, it is actually due to the very unusual political climate. So there's a whole school of thought, mostly on the right in American politics, which is arguing that Obama's bringing in some form of socialism, possibly even communism, which for some reason America's really, really petrified of communism. The McCarthy era never really seemed to end in America for some reason. And they're concerned that he's bringing in a socialised healthcare system and part of this is actually a movement to essentially take over with socialism, with the backing of the UN, which is taken to be the ultimate socialist master. And what better way than to create a pandemic or a subservient population through the vaccination of the population through the threat of a pandemic, which will then apparently allow the UN to take military control of the borders, close America down and take complete military control of the world's remaining superpower. So it's a bad year. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad year for the government to be uh, asking to stick something in, uh, in some people's yes. arms. I mean, the swine it? flu has occurred at precisely the wrong time. Uh, I mean, there was always going to be a movement towards a new healthcare system. It's one of the things that President Obama campaigned upon. The swine flu, if you don't believe it was manufactured in the lab, has appeared at the wrong time, and thus is a confluence of events which is leading to these rather massive conspiracy theories, leading two people taking guns to rallies where the president is speaking about his new healthcare system. And also leading to the belief that uh, the swine flu vaccination will in fact inject a, a microscopic RFID chip into people's bodies. Yes, yes, I mean, uh, 
One of the companies involved in the manufacture of the vaccine also runs this firm called uh, Verichip. And Verichip is trying to design an RFID tag which detects when someone has an a antigen in their system and then will then alert to the RFID, RFID frequency that the person has a particular disease, allowing federal authorities to then move on that population and stop an outbreak before it occurs, which on one level is a really, really good idea. The best way to stop a pandemic is to actually never allow it to become pandemic status. But of course, this has been taken to be the mark of the beast, the RFID chip the UN wants us all to have, so they can eventually actually beam controlling thoughts into our brains. I'm scared already. Um, you should be. <laughs> Mike, you, you've, got, you've got more humdrum concerns about, about the swine flu vaccine and vaccines in general, haven't you? I, 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 I would say humdrum. <laughs> well, um, well uh, we're not talking about injecting microchips into people's bodies. Well, I mean, uh, the interesting thing is that there is a company that is trying to do that, when surely that's what your immune system does, is tell you that you're sick. But um, I guess for me, it's the, it's the, the it's funny to see what's going on. I think the American thing's mostly racist, to be honest. I think it freaks them out that they've got a black president. But the, over, over here, the swine flu issue has been, has been really unusual, because where is it? Like, you know, there's, of course, there's, there's a smattering of people who've, who've got it. Um, my brother's a teacher at the school at Rangitoto College where, where it first sort of appeared. Um, but when I came back from up to Europe a few months ago and I came back from, through the airport, there's a big sign saying, New Zealand government is serious about getting rid of swine flu. Here's three things that you can do. One, don't cough on anyone. Two, wash your hands. And finally, three, if you're sick, don't go to work. And I thought after months and months and months and months and months, that's the very best we can... Do. To be fair, you know, there was, there, there quick, was a we've point got to all get where, quick, quick, quick. There was a point you know? where hospital ICUs were almost over capacity at one point this winter, so it, it wasn't like it was completely trivial. No, 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 but it's also, it's not the avalanche of illness that we were led to believe. And so what's worrying, even just the fact that we've got, if, if you, it's like the boy who cried wolf, you know? So when there is actually a pandemic, when, you know, I, I don't believe that the, the whole, a million people needed to get vaccinated with the men's B vaccination, you know, um, and that, you know, and there's been, there's been, there's an argument there on either side, I guess. But um, if the swine flu is the same, what about the next thing, donkey flu or giraffe flu or whatever it's going to be? Then, you know, if that, if that actually genuinely is serious, if it is rapidly going through the population and it has been spread around the world that quickly, then will we be complacent about it or? or not, you know, and then it's just a matter of asking questions. So why, why would public health professionals, why would doctors say this is the right thing to do? Why should I believe Mikey Havoc and not the doctors? Well, um, for the same, well, I know, I'm not, never said that you know, should believe me. I've just sort of said what, what I think, you know. Um, and say with the Men's B vaccination campaign, you know, I had some uh, the uh, Nick, Dr Nicky Turner screaming down the phone at me about it. And <coughs> then, you know, changing changing their tune like two weeks later and, and, and the, the, the response that, that we got just wasn't satisfactory and I'm not even a parent, you know, and I was just looking at it going, that doesn't make sense. How come they were printing a brochure in April for an, for an epidemic that didn't get announced till, till June? What you are know? you suggesting there though? Well, I don't know, but I mean, I would have said, well, to put it simply, it to there, put it simply right. here's a hundred million dollars worth of vaccine, which couldn't be sold anywhere else in the world, sitting there on the shelf, doing nothing, who can we sell it to? There's a hundred million dollars went from New Zealand taxpayers to, to somebody that wasn't the government, wasn't doctors, it was somebody. Somebody, who's, somebody signed off on that and was it the very best idea? Was that vaccine the, the perfect one? Will it, has it stopped that many kids dying? No. I think I'd better go to Vicky Hyde before she pops. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mike has raised some interesting points. Mm. I mean, where is the epidemic? In some cases, the epidemic isn't here because we have been pre-warned. We're pre talking about swine flu rather than... Yes, mm. because case. we have been pre-warned, we have taken those sorts of care. We have actually paid attention to washing our hands and coughing nicely as opposed to in people's faces. But there really is a potential out there for an epidemic. And yes, I'm concerned, as you are, will we have a problem with who the boy who cried wolf syndrome. But the problem is when you get sort of the conspiracy theories, and the, the most amazing one I saw was that New Zealand in their germ warfare establishment of ESR, the Crown Research Institute, had actually manufactured the actual swine flu virus and had shipped it to Mexico to poison Mexicans in an attempt to get rid of brown people throughout the world. Uh, oh. And you have to say, uh, this is not serving anybody any useful information. Um, the problem with conspiracy theories around things like this is it actually does lead to harm. Um, we do know we have a major problem with vaccinations and, and fears um, around vaccinations and the problems that are associated with them.
but to conflate those with things like world order, new world order conspiracy theories, and the sort of stuff that no, I mean, Ben Mike, comes Mike, out. Mikey didn't go that far, but, but he and his friends were called conspiracy theorists when, when they raised their concerns about the men's B vaccine. And to be honest, it did come up a little bit short on the efficacy in the end, didn't it? I think you have to pay attention to the sorts of things that are going on, but you also have to pay attention to what are your news sources. Is Glenn Beck a credible news source on medical front? I'd be, mm, no, no, I'd rather no, have John Stewart. No. If, if I'm going to have somebody on TV from America, I'd rather have John Stewart. Mm. Yes. The, I mean, the, but just in response to you, so the, my, my thoughts on it came, we had like somebody, this is the men's B one again now, we had somebody ring up, um, ring up, pretending to be a doctor who'd been down on the East Coast with all those impoverished children down there, and they really, you know, when you see those kids down there, Mike, and then it was like, well, who are you? And, I, and they sort of scuttled around, Went to the next sort of comment they wanted to make. I said, "No, no who, what's your name? If you're a doctor, who are you?" And then it was just off the line, you know. And and because, oh, I can't, I can't come up and see you tomorrow because I'm going to England to live, you know. Just this, and and I, I'm unfortunately doing the job that I do, and, and Russell does this as well. That that I mean, I just, you just get lied to by by companies, by companies, by you groups. You get like lied that. to by people I'm as well. I'm not saying huh? robots are controlling us from up above. What I'm saying is that there's, yes. yeah, you do yes. get lied to by people because people run the companies and people don't care. Someone doesn't care if they say there's a war in Iraq, uh, that there's no, uh, there's weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Someone else doesn't care that the vaccine's not safe. Someone else doesn't care that they lied about you hitting their car. You know, it's. Mm. Go, go to Matthew here because I'm, I'm interested in, you know. The, the context that this is being expressed in in the US is not the relatively civilised way we're talking about it here, is it? It is, you know, as you said, it's a new world order thing. Yes, are, yeah. are we seeing in, in Glenn Beck, are we seeing some sort of John Birch Society thing come back, which was explicitly paranoid and explicitly anti-communist? Well, yes, I mean, you look at Glenn Beck and the, the par excellence example of Alex Jones. Alex mm. Jones is a mm. very, very far right, very conservative critic. Uh, he's concerned that Obama is bringing socialism to the shores of the American state and is going to destroy everything which is decent about American society. And it essentially, it's the isolationist notion of America resurging again, the notion that America can be great on its own. It needs no outside influences. So whenever anything goes wrong, any threat to American imperium or or the conservative way of life, that's an outside force. That's socialism, that's communism. That's and and yet it, it's uh, manifesting here as well because Trevor Luden, the former ACT Party vice president, oh, is yes. now a media yeah. star in the US for his tireless work in uncovering the communist conspiracy that brought Barack Obama the, to office. The alleged communist conspiracy that yes. brought Barack Obama to office. You yes. doubt him? Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, I've, I've, I've been following his work for quite some time because he really is actually a huge media star in the US now. He's informing the whole Van Jones scandal and so forth. And it's quite fascinating because Trevor starts with the notion that communism is at the gates of America and Barack Obama is the source of the new communist world order. And so he finds evidence to support it. And what's fascinating about the evidential inquiry he goes into is that because he's made the assumption Obama is a communist. He finds evidence for that proposition without realising that his initial assumption or bias actually informs the way he takes evidence to be. And so, yes, he's, he's become a media darling for particular parts of the far right, both in the US and in the UK. So he's feeding stuff to the UK as well. And they're taking what he says to be gospel truth. But the strange thing about conspiracy theories is once you assume there's a conspiracy operating in the background, it's very easy to find anything which satisfies the claim that they are up to something. Confirmation bias, well, I believe it's called. Vicky. It is called confirmation bias, and you see it in everything from people pointing at, look at the Kaimanawa wall, it's a bunch of rocks, guys, um, through to people sort of saying, I've got a whole pile of rocks down south which prove that the Celts came here, therefore we should uh, ignore the Māori because they're just second-class citizens. Uh, and we see that sort of conspiracy theory come up time and time again, and they're really damaging. I mean, we can laugh about people who think think that the Queen, for example, is a li lizard, reptilian, shape-shifting alien in cahoots with the Pope to take over the world. And there is a conspiracy theory out there that says that. There are quite a few people who believe it too. Precisely. <laughs> but when you get things, for example, like in Nigeria, where they almost had polio wiped out, and then there was this idea that it was a conspiracy by the West to do terrible things to Muslims and Muslim kids, therefore they shouldn't use it, it came back again. And to see that sort of thing happen is unconscionable with... You need to stand up and take a stand, I think. Right, well, we'll take a break now and perhaps um, look at a few, a few more of those things you raised there. Uh, when we come back also, Sarah Daniel will look back at the history of the conspiracy theory.